Thank you, Abby. I mean, it's amazing. You're, what, 22 years old hosting an event in a beautiful space like this. So thank you and for getting so many great people together. Um, you can have the first flower. Um, so we thought we'd do something engaging, try to ask some questions. If you answer a question, you get some very expensive flowers that are marketed very effectively. So um, we'll ask some questions throughout. Appreciate the energy. Uh, but before we get started, so about make a quick intro. What's your story? How'd you end up at Venus? Um, and go from there. Yeah. So I am the chief marketing officer at Venus of Floor. I've only really had this role for the past nine months. I literally started in a peak period called Valentine's Day for us. So that's like our literal Super Bowl. Um, before Venus, I was at Another Tomorrow, so really uh, luxury, fashion, uh, small, early stage startup, and Paravel before that, um, but really where I cemented a lot of my um, career was at Tiffany & Company, so I was there for five years managing the engagement ring category, so that was really fun. And now you can build, you can buy an engagement ring online because of Sovet. Yes, that was my main initiative, really digitizing and building digital transformation into the engagement ring category. Tiffany and Company did not sell engagement rings online until, you know, really recently. Awesome, it's crazy to think. All right, so there are going to be a couple of things we go over today, but before we do that, and. Show of hands, how many people know what a content delivery network is? Wow. Okay. How many people feel comfortable explaining what a content delivery network is? We got one. <laughs> All right, so you, in order to serve content faster to people, you put a copy of the content closer to servers, to the location of the person, so then when they are downloading or visiting the site, the content arrives to their device faster. Great. You've earned yourself a, a Venus flower. <laughs> and how many people know what Nostra is? OK, who wants to go? Who, who feels comfortable explaining it? Or... All right, let's go. First part. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yes. Exactly. Um, so what Nostra is, every e-commerce site, every website in the world, hopefully, has a content delivery network. For the vast majority of websites, you really can use an out-of-the-box content delivery network, whether it's Cloudflare, Akamai, whatever it is. For e-commerce websites, you know, the way a content delivery network works is it's kind of having a pre-built, cached version of something. For e-commerce sites, that's very difficult to use an out-of-the-box system because you can't have a pre-built shopping cart or a pre-built personalization widget. That doesn't work because I can't get mixed shopping cart, I can't get Sylvette's shopping cart. That's just gonna cause headache after headache. And so what Nostra is, is kind of a content delivery network that's hyper-focused on e-commerce that's figured out how to handle these dynamic bits of a website. And so, you know, it's a CDN that can handle kind of the 60, 70% of an e-commerce website that is actually truly dynamic. Uh, so that's what we do. Um, so I think we have a couple flowers to give out today, so thank you both. Um, so maybe tell the story of, you know, you took over as CMO of, of Venus at Floor right before probably the biggest seat, you know, time of the year for you all. What did you do when you jumped in and what, what were kind of the, the tools and tactic, tactics you did day one kind of in a rush to get prepared for um, Valentine's Day? Obviously we all know that Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Valentine's Day, for us, Mother's Day, holiday, are really peak periods, right, for your e-commerce 
And so you want it to, one, be as quick as possible. I'm sure we've all flown these days and you know, you're trying to get your Wi-Fi to work and it takes forever to load. You don't want your customers to have that experience, right? And so you know, how do you make your content really effective is one of the first things we did. Um, the second aspect was really more on performance, right? And so how do we kind of work with our finance teams to lower our ROAS targets, really kind of meet the customer where it is so that you can really deliver all of the tools and content that you really need going forward. And so it's a little bit of a balance. I find that marketing these days is very revenue performance driven, right? We're not just brand marketers anymore and just developing really fun, exciting initiatives and tools. We're really the people who are leading the charge to make sure that revenue is meeting financial goals, right? And so I think that's a shift, right, that really happens during these high peak, high traffic sessions. Um, you moved from enterprise, right? Tiffany's, whenever I hear enterprise as a startup founder, I'm like, oh God, like this is not gonna work. Like I can't hire somebody from enterprise, but you've made the transition. And so what are the things that you took away from the enterprise world that you're like, I am so glad that I had the enterprise experience and more startups need to truly understand and operate this way? I find this question funny. I, I get it quite often. It's very hard to go, usually, like people who work in large corporations don't want to work in a small startup or vice versa. I actually find that the fundamentals that you learn in a massive corporation are the things that really give you a leg up when you're in a startup, right? And so, you know, for us, we didn't, at Venus, we didn't necessarily have all the retail fundamentals, right? Like there was, a financial plan, but there wasn't necessarily an inventory plan to that financial plan. There wasn't necessarily a merchandise assortment to that financial plan. And so a lot of those things are things you learn in a big corporate uh, environment that a startup really needs to start implementing, which I find is actually kind of fun. <laughs> the organizational aspect of things. Um, and so I think that gives you a leg up when you're moving into the startup world. Absolutely. All right, to turn it back to the audience here. Site speed, which channel, there is a right answer here, does site speed have the biggest impact on? You already got a flower. Anyone else? Oh, here. Mobile, because that's like 80% usually. Mobile, okay. That's mobile versus desktop. Yep, so that would be one. What about acquisition channel? Meta would be the biggest. Anybody can get a guess the second biggest impact? Organic search. Organic search. So one of the things we notice with, with using Nostra is we see, I think on average, a 12% decrease in bounce from Meta, which is pretty great. Um, and it not only impacts the, you know, getting more purchases, but it also lowers your CPCs because the way that the ad auctions work are if you have a higher you know, quality landing experience, you get a higher quality score and that'll really decrease CPCs and especially in a time where, you know, you're fighting against elections where people, or we were at dinner last night with, with our friends at Google and they were saying, hey, we we had somebody come to us and say, hey, I have $50 million that I need to spend. I don't have a ROAS target, I just need to spend $50 million. You know, when you're going up against those people, you have to be as efficient as possible and that's that's really where we, and you, you that's where we, we see Nostra having a huge impact on, on Facebook and then Google when you're talking about kind of your, you know, your, your, search, uh, your search impression share due to ad rank. So those are kind of the two biggest channels we'll, we'll, see, um, we'll see site speed impact. What, what, what's been the impact of making your website faster and how do you think about that as, as a marketer kind of running a business that both has a, a, a meaningful direct consumer presence, but also a, you know, a, a wholesale, uh, a retail presence as well. Yeah, I would say, you know, Nostro is something we implemented this summer, 
mostly as we get ready to ramp up, obviously, for the rest of the year, right? And so you want to make sure you're, one, as a brand marketer, not making kind of exceptions for your content, right? You start to reduce your content as much as possible because you want your website to be as quick as possible because you don't want somebody to wait for it to load during your peak periods, right? And so we don't want to make those sacrifices for our content because content and luxury or when you're trying to sell $299 small flowers or you know thousands of dollars of flowers, you want to make sure that it's loading, it's beautiful, and we're giving you the most beautiful campaign. So as a marketer, I don't want to make that, you know, concessions, right? And so the other aspect of it is really more on CAC, right? Like the quicker your site, the quicker it's gonna show up on, you know, Meta, and Google, AdRank, so on and so forth. So we've seen those improvements across the board this summer, and we're excited to continue to see CAC improvements, especially as we head into an election year where it's much more complicated to get cut through the noise and compete with people who have $50 million to spend with no ROAS targets. We have ROAS targets. <laughs> It's a good life, spending 50 million with the goal of spending 50 million. That's, that sounds like fun. Um, so what else have you been doing outside of Nostra to get Venus ready for, you know, what it kind of seems like back-to-back -back peak seasons? <laughs> for what us, aren't you doing? What am I doing? What am I not doing? Um, I think I, I touched a little bit on the fundamentals. I think marketing is starting to play a bigger role on product, product development, what the product assortment looks like as we look to the consumer. What should we give them? What should we not? What should we give a certain type of customer? Where is it working? Where is it not? I'd say that's one of the big things. We also have 11 retail stores. so. Retail marketing, regional marketing for those stores is really important and becomes really critical as we head into Valentine's Day. And then obviously as marketers, I think everybody here is trying to find ways to diversify and when, right? And so how do we move off some of these dependencies on Meta and Google, make them really hyper efficient, and then leverage some of that money for other initiatives, more fun things so we can really connect with the community, the customer in different ways and stay top of mind. I think it's, you know, I think it's very difficult coming into an election year. Yeah. Any questions from the audience? Remember, you do get some, what, minimum $250 <laughs> flowers that last a year if you ask a question, assuming we have enough left. I think we have three left. Three left. We can do some Four trivia left. questions. Yeah, some trivia questions. What do you think the average load time on a e-commerce site is? We'll take three people and the closest one gets a flower. All right. That's one up. You know the answer. <laughs> uh, Helen? I feel like full load is like eight seconds. We'll keep going, we'll keep going. Close. It's between three and five seconds. So you, you win. You win some flowers. Um, any other questions? Oh, Megan? And it's interesting because I think in, and I'm going to answer that question probably in two parts. Um, I think in the enterprise world, it's much more driven by out of the box ideas, right? You can really um, spend <laughs> significant amounts of money in the budgets that you have to be able to really continue to build brand, stay relevant. 
um, do initiatives that are, you know, Niagara Falls is Tiffany Blue, right? Things like that that are really out there. Um, that is the bulk of the spend in, in a big company that everybody knows, right? And so when you move into a startup, it's, you have to think about it very differently because every dollar or cent literally counts, right? And so, you know, we're lucky at Venus, we're kind of um, not super early stage anymore. We've been around for 10 years, which is exciting. And so I constantly think about ways to balance that the same way I would at Tiffany if I was probably running the show there. Um, I want to build brand and really elevate the brand, so that's very top of mind for us. We've spent the past nine years really riding the coattails of performance, right? And that was really important for us in solidifying that in performance, making it effective. And so now for me, it's much more about you know, incremental spend in activities, activations, getting community involved, and really building out pop-ups, retail, brick and mortar for the next like year or two, because I think that's really the place for us to grow from a brand perspective. Yeah, exactly. Pop-ups. Pop -ups. Yeah. You might have said before, we said it was three to five seconds for a site. What about Wikipedia? Like, how much is there in terms of Well, on average, we, well, for Shopify sites, I should say, on average, the website gets 26% faster, I think is the number, which leads to a 12% decrease on bounce rate for Meta. I think it's like 8 or 9% across the board, and then five to eight percent on average for conversion rate if we can measure it. I think a lot of Shopify sites are built in a way that make it very difficult there, but um, that, that's what we've seen across the board. So you guys are established. I got one more question for you. What are the new channels that you want to try out and yeah, you know, whether it's this holiday season or over the next you know year or two to kind of expand Venus? I think we had direct mail right before me, right? <laughs> we, we have really invested heavily into direct mail this year. Um, the return has been incredible. Um, and it's been great to, for us, we're obviously a gift giving business, right? So I'm not only able to target the person who's receiving the flower, which I don't necessarily have that information from an email perspective or an SMS perspective, um, but I can send them something to follow up, which is really successful for us, but I can also target the gift giver, right? And so it allows us to do both, so I'm, I'm plugging you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, we've really heavily invested there. Um, I think I touched on a little bit on brand awareness, uh, pop-ups, retail, but also, you know, we're moving into digital at a home, trying to have more experiences, ha trying to show up a little bit more from a brand side um, so that we can stay top of mind in out-of-the-box ways, I suppose, is the best way to put it. We tag all of our purchases um, in the sense that if it's going, I mean, and this is kind of like a directional attribution, I suppose, and we used to also do this at Tiffany, so if it's going to the same address as the billing address, it's typically considered a self-purchase. If it's going to a different billing address with a different name, it's considered a gift. This is obviously directional, right? Like, we're, we're not gonna be like, super, super 100% all of the time, but it's statistically significant. We also ask post-purchase surveys and um, have lots of additional tools to try and get, is it a birthday, is it an anniversary? We also use technology to read through the gift notes. So that allows us to leverage some of that information for additional tagging, like is it anniversary, is it a birthday, is it, a thank you gift, et cetera. And so we do that to build out cohorts. Awesome. Oh, we got a lot more questions. Oh, wow. Well. Um, 
We haven't uh, moved into broadcast yet. We've done some connected TV, I'm not gonna lie, um, through you know multiple vendors and we've kind of tested a little bit of the waters there, particularly for Mother's Day. Um, we got really good results, so my team's very eager to, they pitch me on the daily basis, like let's do that again um, and get some additional budget there. But So we're planning for Valentine's Day to do a deeper dive into the broadcast landscape. I'm assuming public relations is a big component for you guys, like holiday gift guides and magazines and things like that. Do you have any advice for brands that are looking to get more into that, the best way to go about that, getting in front of publications, gift guides, all of that good stuff? Oh my gosh, so uh, this is actually the, the battle I have with my PR firm because we mostly just get gift guides. <laughs> and I'll take them if you wanna give them to me. I really <laughs> want us to get like proper um, PR and, and news articles, but um, I, you know, from, Par I worked at Paravel, affiliate is really the best way to go. Yeah. You know, you get commission. Most of those gift cards, they don't want, it's like a pay to play. Um, they really don't want to include you in the gift guide if you don't have an affiliate link or an affiliate, affiliate company to work with. Um, from a super early stage startup, I've heard good things on like a commission junction and things like that, but I haven't personally gone that route, so. Last question. Um, <laughs> we do a lot of prep on our end. I think on an average month, that's not a peak season. We serve 500 million visits. On a peak season, like on one day, it'll be two, three, four X that in terms of traffic to the site and bot traffic to the site. I don't, m most people don't know, but like the majority of the internet is bots just clicking around. The amount of activity on Black Friday, Cyber Monday is unreal. Um, so we do a ton of prep. I'm sure you do t a ton too. We actually have hourly meetings. <laughs> uh, for us, uh, the, the days leading up to Valentine's Day are literally like multi-million dollar days. And so for us, it's like critical that we have all of our um, agencies on, like we, we literally start at 7 a.m. and every hour we have 15 minute touch bases like across the board, across the organization. Um, things can sell out like in a minute and then we find some additional inventory and we have to bring it back online. So we're just like almost like in a war room <laughs> scenario all day long, <laughs> which is not a bad problem to have. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you. And do we get rid of all the flower, or not get no, rid, do we gift two all left. of them? Yeah, I think yeah. you two deserve them. Thank you everyone. Thank you guys so much.